Upfront, the online marketplace that makes it easy for anyone to discover and rent physical retail spaces. Prior to co-founding Storefront with Eric Eliasson, the duo also co-founded Social Earth, a platform for social entrepreneurship news and resources that featured over 200 contributors in 25 countries. Social Earth was later acquired by 3BL Media in 2012. Growing up in Minnesota in a family of makers, Tristan, also an NDSU graduate, naturally had a passion for leveraging technology to help make starting and growing businesses easier. With huge retailers like Target and Best Buy in Minnesota, Eric and Tristan got the idea for Storefront after seeing an increasing amount of empty storefronts in their hometown. At that time, Eric and Tristan also saw that some of their friends were starting online businesses but faced a host of challenges when they transitioned into actual physical stores. The duo saw just how easy it was becoming for retailers and artists to set up stores online and thought, there needs to be an easier way to do that offline. Born from both co-founders' early exposure to art and entrepreneurship, as well as their mutual passion to revitalize local economies, Storefront was founded with a mission to disrupt the retail real estate market in the same way that Airbnb and other sharing economy startups disrupted their respective industries. With a mission to connect brands with amazing short-term retail spaces in four major U.S. cities, Storefront has become an industry leader having helped generate over $40 million in merchandise revenue for their partners. Let's give a warm welcome to Tristan Pollock. Hi everyone, I'm Tristan uh, and I'm really excited to be in Fargo. I lived in Fargo downtown before I left and uh, I'm really excited to be back. Who loves downtown Fargo? Okay, I hope to see every hand up by the end of today. So, uh, who am I? Um, you may be wondering why I'm riding a bike on a fire escape in San Francisco. Well, I'm going to tell my story today and why I'm so excited about cities. So, I grew up in the Twin Cities, uh, and I, now I live in San Francisco. And I'm also an NDSU grad, so I'm really excited. Go Bison! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I grew up uh, in, a, in the creative community. Uh, my mom was an artist, uh, my dad's a designer, uh, still runs his own graphic design shop, and uh, this is an example of the places you'd find me as a young kid. Uh, I'd be at art fairs, gallery openings, um, all sorts of experiences that make a city more vibrant and uh, more livable, uh, places that you want to be. And although I love Minneapolis and lived there before I moved to San Francisco and spent a lot of my time there when I was young, this is what my backyard looked like when I was younger. Uh, but like half of the world's population today, um, I've always felt a calling to live in an urban area. So th oh, you know, over 3.5 billion people live in urban areas today, and that number is going to double uh, by mid-century, 2050. Uh, after graduating from NDSU, I was uh, a, a, young, uh, a young graduate and I went to BestBuy.com uh, right out of school. Uh, I did some really amazing things there. I got really excited about how to have an impact on your community and also the bridge between online and offline. Um, BestBuy.com did a lot of things working with their customers, connecting their in-store experience with their online experience, and I was a part of that. Uh, from a really early age uh, in my career. Um, one of the things I did there was craft the most uh, highest performing email of all time, uh, bringing in about uh, 20 million different customers, different view open rates, uh, views. But uh, what got me excited there were some of the mentors that I worked with. And one of them uh, got me really excited about social entrepreneurship. And how we can have a more meaningful impact through our work. So that became Social Earth. Uh, I met Eric Eliason, my co-founder, uh, currently at Storefront, um, in a Minneapolis coffee shop. And we started a site called Social Earth to provide a voice for social entrepreneurs, solution journalists, anyone with a really world-changing idea that's working on really hard problems. 
And so a lot of people call us the Huffington Post for social entrepreneurship, and we built one of the largest networks out there for this niche media environment. And what I'm really proud of is that we ran it, we bootstrapped it and ran it for three years, and it was uh, acquired by a Boston-based media company, which allowed us to start thinking again about you know, what, what out of all the topics in social entrepreneurship, what got Eric and I really excited? And what that was was urban innovation. How do we create more vibrant cities? How do we make uh, livable cities that are filled and empowered with our creative community? So enter Storefront. And we started thinking about Storefront in 2012. And for a lot of those reasons I just mentioned, we wanted to make retail space accessible to the artists, the designers, the emerging brands in our communities and give them access to the retail spaces that are in urban centers. This is one of the big reasons. There's a lot of gray space in cities. Sidewalks, gray walls, chain link fence, dark spaces, and at the time, one in 10 stores was vacant. And that's still the, that's still the average today across the US. And there's 28 million small businesses and entrepreneurs that could use those spaces. And it's, our philosophy is that it's never been easier to start your business. You have Etsy and Shopify for selling online. You have Square for POS. You have Twitter, YouTube for promotion. There's so many tools, but yet the leg up for these 28 million is still very large to get into retail. Most of the time, it's expected that you sign a five or 10 year lease. And that takes it off, that option off the table for a lot of young entrepreneurs and small businesses. So our goal is to bring these artists and designers and makers into their communities and give them the power to make them more vibrant. Because in turn, that helps the businesses surrounding where they're popping up. It helps, uh, and it makes the neighborhood and the neighbors more excited. So here's an example of one of our friends and entrepreneurs who was doing something right around the time we started thinking about Storefront in the summer of 2012. It's Jennifer, and she wa wanted to do a pop-up gallery called Art du Nord in Minneapolis. And it started really rough. Uh, after she talked to 20 different commercial brokers, 10 different insurance providers, she eventually got to a vacant space that was not turnkey and needed tenant improvements. So she started working on it. <laughs> and it got better. And it started to come together as an actual gallery that featured local artists. And then people came. And so those are the types of experiences that got Eric and I really excited, and we wanted to see what we could do to exponentially grow them across the US. And so that brings me to how did, how did I end up in San Francisco um, from an NDSU kid that lived in Minneapolis. And that brings us to AngelPad, uh, a startup accelerator based in San Francisco, founded by ex-Googlers, that gave us a chance. They take on 12 companies, 12 startups. Generally, there's two people per company. So about 24 people in our class. We were in the fifth class of AngelPad. And it's a 10-week program where you do nothing but work for 10 weeks straight. Uh, you help you refine your business strategy. You talk to venture capitalists. And you find out what needs to happen to bring your business to the next level. For us, uh, this was an invaluable experience. And we became one of those 12 companies in fall of 2012. It, the really funny story of it is we literally had three days notice uh, in October, early October, to move out to San Francisco from the Twin Cities. And I went to a friend's wedding on the weekend, showed up on Monday morning, stayed with a, stayed with a friend of a friend on a couch, and then couch surfed for the next week, eventually moving into an apartment with four other people, and it was only one bedroom, who slept on air mattresses for the next three months. So, very, very startup-esque of living situations, especially when you're in one of the most expensive cities to live 
as in San Francisco. But it all added to the experience and showed how willing and how the level we were willing to take it to make sure that we brought this opportunity uh, and grew it to a point where more artists and designers and brands could access this. More small businesses had an opportunity to get into retail spaces and start testing out ideas and meeting customers in their cities. So here's the 12 companies on demo day where we pitched 200 investors in a hot, sweaty, small room. <laughs> but these were some of the, the you know, top tier investors in Silicon Valley. So it gave us a huge opportunity uh, to meet the people that we needed to meet to fund our, our, our passion, our idea. And since, uh, we've gotten high praise from cities as well as media uh, with one of the taglines being Airbnb for retail uh, by the New York Times. And if you don't know Airbnb, um, they're doing something uh, similar but for consumers. So if you're a traveler and you're going to a city, uh, you can find a space to, say, to stay uh, as in someone's apartment. Maybe there's an extra room. Maybe I'm traveling out of town like I am right now in San Francisco and I have someone staying there. So creating more efficient use of residential space. In the same vein, that's what Storefront's doing for retail space. And we're redefining what that can be. Uh, what, what we, this is a good example of what retail space can be. This is actually our office. And we now, uh, every month, we have a different artist or designer that pops up in our, in our storefront showroom, as we call it, and creates an amazing experience. And we're in an a, a office building that has about 20 different art galleries in it. And we picked that strategically because we want to live and breathe what we do every day. So I think this shows that you know, your office can be a creative space. Vacant retail can be a creative space. Uh, a parking lot could host a market. A hotel lobby could host an artist. And I think there's countless more ways that we can think about how to put creative spaces in our cities. Right now, we have 16 employees, and we've raised close to $9 million in funding. So we're really going. Uh, the site's been live, as you see here, for about a year and a half. And we've been doing it for about two years. And as you can see, uh, our cities, uh, this is New York, and the, the pins on the map show some of the, some of the retail spaces that we have uh, currently in Manhattan. And we've helped everyone from Nike and Kanye West, this is Kanye West's store in, in Manhattan, to emer these emerging artists and designers that we were originally very passionate about getting into these spaces. It turns out they're all using the same sorts of spaces, vacant retail, or popping into a boutique that's already established on, on one of the high foot traffic shopping streets, or an art gallery. And we're getting these artists and designers into so the best retail spaces in New York, LA, Chicago, San Francisco, and many more cities to come. We want to build the tools and the technology that allow any city center, any urban, urban area to bring in these experiences and help their local creative community provide a more engaging, vibrant city experience. And we've helped over a thousand stores open so far. So we're really excited about the possibilities that can happen when you make retail space more efficient and more accessible. So I want to leave you with one central message. Create space that matters. It could be your office. It could be a vacant store. It could be a blank wall. All that gray space I was talking about earlier, I think there's a huge opportunity to take that, put a mural on it, host a market, find your friends that are artists and designers, have them come to your office. Uh, in the end, you're helping them grow their business, and it's going to help them become more successful, and you're going to see more of these creative opportunities in your city. Really excited to be back in Fargo. Thank you so much. <laughs>